Okay, let's go ahead and get started uh, using the contents of the student ap application kit to go ahead and install a strain gauge. Now the first step, uh, you can follow along with this video, you can follow along with the checklist or the instruction bulletins included with the kit. First step is going to be uh, to degrease the surface of the aluminum. And to do that, we're going to use the GC6 alcohol. And we're going to use a, a gauze sponge. So here, I'm just going to saturate the gauze sponge with some alcohol. We're going to wipe down both surfaces of the beam. We want to do the whole top surface because later we don't want to drag any contaminants back into the gauge area. Uh, you can see that there are some materials present here. The edges. Maybe go over it with the clean gauze. If you do all these steps very thoroughly and carefully, as I'm showing you here, your chances of uh, bonding a gauge successfully are extremely high. Okay. Now, the next step in uh, preparing our surface will be to abrade, and uh, we're going to do this with the 320 grit silicon carbide paper. And this is going to be a wet abrasive step. And what I'm going to use as the wetting agent is going to be the red tip bottle. This is the Imprep Conditioner A. This is a mildly acidic solution that will uh, remove oxides from the surface of many metals, aluminum included. And here I'm going to uh, abrade close to I've got a couple of marks that will be difficult to show on the camera. I'm going to abrade pretty much the whole top of the beam. And I'm not going to go excessive on it. I'm going to just go back and forth a few times. We're not trying to remove material here. Uh, we are trying to uh, roughen the surface and clean the surface so that we get a, a good bond. Now you notice I'm using a stack of paper here. This is convenient because uh, as the paper becomes dirty, you can just move it and then you've got a clean sheet to work on. So after the uh, abrasive step with the 320 grit, I'd like to show you the wiping technique that we recommend. My gauge area is going to be about here. So what you want to do is wipe in one direction only through the gauge area. I'm going to put the gauze pad down right here. I'm going to wipe all the way through the gauge area, not going back and forth, all the way off the end of the beam. Gauge area is here. I'm going to start here and wipe the other way. Now, why did I do that? If you wipe back and forth, you're just going to redeposit contaminants on the surface that you're, you're trying to remove. If you wipe in one direction, you're uh, removing the conditioner A plus all the uh, grains and uh, contaminants that you've abraded off the surface. And also, never let that conditioner A dry on the surface after you do something like this. You need to absorb it. Uh, if it air dries, it's just going to recondense contaminants onto the surface. Okay, now uh, once we have our surface rough abraded with the 320 grit, I'm now going to go back over it and do a finish abrasive step with the 400 grit silicon carbide paper. And it's the same process as before, so I'll just demonstrate and uh, we're going to use the same steps that we just did. Okay, so now I have the correct surface roughness for aluminum. I will be able to get a very good bond that's going to transfer strain without loss. Now, I'm going to uh, put some alignment marks on this aluminum. I'm going to use the 4H drafting pencil that's included with the kit. I'm just going to put some uh, marks on the top here. I have some uh, scratches, scratch marks on the edge of the beam that's going to mark where a potential gauge location can be. So transfer that so I can see it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the glass plate here as a straight edge. And I'm going to go across there with this uh, pencil a few times. Now, uh, if you read our, our tech note on strain gauge surface preparation, it goes into a lot of detail on 
the reason I'm doing some of these things. Now on aluminum, I'll tell you why we use a 4 inch pencil. is because we want to produce a burnish. We don't want to scratch the surface. We don't want to use a tool or something that's going to dig into the aluminum. The On the sanded surface that we just created with the silicon carbide paper, this 4 inch pencil will flatten some of those uh, peaks. So that when I remove the pencil lead later, it's going to uh, leave behind an optical line. It's called a burnish, but there's no surface deformation or uh, strain concentrations created. And that's very important when we're trying to measure strain. Okay, so now we need to uh, use our cotton tipped applicator. Again, I'm going to use the red tip bottle. This is the conditioner A, still the acidic uh, conditioner. And first I'm going to scrub that lead off. Okay, once I get most of that off, then I'm going to scrub in the direction that I sanded. And uh, that will clean out the uh, grooves where it's, the surface has been abraded. And again, I'm always working an area larger than I need for the gauge. Same drying technique as before. I'm going to start outside the gauge area, go off one end, start outside the gauge area here, go the other way. Now the final step in a correct surface preparation is to neutralize the surface. We've been using an acidic conditioner. It's a mild, mildly acidic conditioner. Uh, the pH is not all that uh, low. So we're going to use a mild uh, alkaline substance here called Neutralizer 5A. And this is going to raise the surface pH to just where we want it, close to neutral, uh, which would be about ideal for instant curing cyanoacrylate adhesive like our Embon 200. Again, I'm going to work it into the grooves with the uh, cotton tipped applicator. I'm going to dry the surface. Same wiping technique. Okay, this surface is now precision cleaned. Uh, I believe you could probably see the burnish mark that's left behind. That's not pencil lead. Uh, that's an optical burnish left behind on the soft aluminum by the 4-H pencil. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside for a second. Now we're going to work with the strain gauge, and this is where you use the glass plate. Now, I've been handling this, so it's going to have some fingerprints on it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a few drops of the neutralizer. This is the blue tip bottle. And we're going to clean that glass off a little bit before we lay our strain gauge on it. This is the strain gauge that comes one of the five that comes with a kit. And uh, it's a C2A 13 250LW 350 ohm. This has a quarter of an inch gauge length and it's pre cable It's got a 10 foot length of cable on it. Uh, so once we've on the strain gauge, it's ready to connect to the instrument. Now, hang on to this card because this has our engineering data on it, information that you'll need to make an accurate strain measurement such as the gauge factor, uh, transverse sensitivity, resistance, etc. Okay, these pre-cable gauges, you should probably leave the, the cable bundled until you're finished with the installation. Uh, this will hold it all in place. You can just slide this uh, out of the sleeve and lay the strain gauge on the glass. Now the way we're going to handle the gauge uh, for installation is with our tape. What's included with the kit is called PCT2M tape and uh, what makes this tape special is that we've tested it. We've uh, worked with it thoroughly. We know that there's nothing about this tape that's going to contaminate the surface. It's going to be incompatible with the adhesive or any of the materials that we use during the installation. So we've tested it for you and we know it's going to work good. I'm going to tear off the first couple of inches, which might have a bit of dust on it. And then pull off a two or three inch length here. And uh, a lot of different ways uh, people prefer to 
lay the tape across the gauge on a pre-cable gauge. Now, my personal preference on a beam like this and the orientation of the gauge that I have here is to go across the gauge. And so I'm going to uh, lay this tape across the gauge. There's no precision alignment being done here yet. We're just going to use this to, to pick the gauge up off the surface. So there it's tacked down to the glass surface and uh, now I can lift it at a very shallow angle. And once I get it past the edge of the gauge I can lift the other side. And now I have the means to uh, handle the gauge while I position it precisely on my alignment mark. So I'm going to lay the gauge close to the position. Again these wires you have to uh, handle them as you're working with the tape. And once I've got it close to position, I can use this tape and the alignment marks that are included with the strain gauge uh, to accurately position. Actually, I'm going to turn this around. I think I'd like to keep on the gauge so that my wires are oriented this direction. You can look through the tape here, uh, visually see the alignment marks, and position your gauge. Now it's important when you lay this gauge down, you don't want a lot of tension on the tape. That's going to stretch a, a pretty large offset into the strain gauge and it's going to get bonded in place. So when I actually lay the tape down, I'm going to have very little tension on it. I'm going to lay it down, it's going to hold it in position at the alignment marks and my wires can just sit here for the moment. Okay, now we're ready to bond the strain gauge. The tape will hold it accurately in position so I can lift one side of this tape, get it just past the strain gauge, lay it over, and then pull it back slightly. That's gonna expose the, the back surface of the gauge. By the way, uh, I should have mentioned it earlier, but this gauge is positioned so that the dull colored side is downward. There's a dull side and a shiny side on these gauges and the dull side uh, opposite the wires is the side that you want to bond. So that side was down, now it's flipped up ready for the application of the adhesive. This is the Catalyst C that's included with the kit and like any catalyst the chemical purpose of it is to speed up a chemical reaction. So we're going to uh, brush this on the back of the gauge only, not on the surface of the aluminum. And you don't use this wet. I've seen this done incorrectly before, so I want to be sure and point it out here. The catalyst is allowed to dry. The chemical substance that is the catalyst is suspended in a liquid. So we let that liquid uh, alcohol flash off and evaporate, leaving the catalyst on the surface. So you got to allow a minute or two here for drying time before you put the adhesive on. Okay, so our Catalyst C has dried for two minutes. We're now ready to apply the M-Bond 200 adhesive. A little two gram bottle here, which is convenient. These are nice because uh, I can open this bottle and use it. Meanwhile, the other four that are in the kit remain unopened and will remain fresh for a longer period of time, maximizing their shelf life. I'm just going to clip the top of this off here. The little thing I like to do, a little personal preference, but I like to squeeze the first drop out and just throw it away. Uh, just in case there was any adhesive sitting in the, in the tube at the top on the straw part. Okay, now the way you apply this, you want to pull the, pull the gauge back uh, about a quarter of an inch from where it's going to land because I want to put the adhesive down and allow room for this to spread out as I lay the tape down. So I've got about uh, an eighth of an inch of uh, space here. I'm going to put a single drop of adhesive right on the edge of the tape interface. And I'm going to take one of these gauze pads. And I'm going to hold the tape over while I uh, use this gauze, gauze pad to uh, swipe the tape down. That's going to spread the adhesive uh, beneath the strain gauge. And then I'm going to immediately apply thumb pressure. I'm going to hold this for at least one minute.
Okay, two minutes has elapsed, and uh, I'm now ready, ready to remove my thumb. If your thumb sticks a little bit, just twist it and pull it off. It should be fine. And uh, now I'm going to remove this handling tape, and this will uh, complete the bonding of the strain gauge. Now, to remove this, I'm going to pull it at a very steep angle, 180 degrees back on itself. I'm going to kind of slide it back and off the wires. Now, right next to the strain gauge, the wires are bonded. And that's a good thing. That'll, that'll help you remove the tape easier. So those wires are actually stuck down right there. They're still a little bit loose right here. And the next thing I would do, uh, I think we'll go and apply our protective coating. I'm going to unwrap these wires and I'm going to use the uh, twist tie that's on it to anchor it to the beam. This will just help me uh, hold it in place and not worry about it moving around until I get the coating on it and get things permanently attached. Okay, now we're ready to uh, do the final step, and that's going to be to apply a protective coating. Here we're going to use the M-Code A. It's included with the student application kit. Now the purpose of this coating is to uh, isolate the sensitive uh, resistance element from changes in humidity uh, to give it a little bit of mechanical protection. It will also help to seal these wires down to the surface and make the installation more rugged. So a couple of things that a coating does for you. It gives you some environment protection to help preserve the sensitive uh, resistance changes in the strain gauge. It also makes it uh, durable. Okay, at this point, uh, this completes the installation of a C2A strain gauge using all the materials that are included with the student application kit. Now, what we'll do next is continue on with the use of the kit and uh, we will connect this to our student DAC and make a strain measurement.